Well, David Seymour must be screaming into his pillow somewhere in Epsom because Christopher Luxon says you are in. He will work with you, even though apparently he doesn't know you. That was weird, <laughs> wasn't it? Well, I don't mind these insults. You know, it uh, was said by someone heroically famous, uh, turn the other cheek. But you've got to remember what that phrase is about. You turn the other cheek to make sure it doesn't happen again. Well, do you know him? Who's that? Christopher Luxon. <laughs> well, how can I know someone who doesn't know me? Of course I do. What do you and think? you all know it. And it's sad we just wasted the first minute of this conversation. Well, I want to say that this seems like a sure thing now, doesn't it? Because even if National and ACT can get to 61 seats, they... And they can't. And well, well, right now, they're, they're at the 60 or the sort of 61, but they will need an insurance policy because parliamentary terms can be unpredictable. They may lose somebody. You know, you would be familiar with uh, people leaving parties. But the Premier... The, the, so it looks like Christopher Luxon has decided he needs an insurance policy, a sort of Peter's premium. And I'm wondering, what's it going to cost him? What is your top priority? Look, I don't think that question mirrors the fact that this dramatic change out there in the public, they're changing every day and with great speed now. A lot of the uh, so-called forecasts of the polls are really wrong because the polls are way behind changing events. You can tell, but uh, we've got the halls packed to the gunnels. Now people are saying they want to change because they know that National and Active hit the ceiling and so has the Labour Party. Things are in big trouble for them and so that the polls will have us bring us home, but they want to know, are we going to have a far better government than one we had? Yes, they do want to know that, and I suppose they want your supporters will want to know if the things that you have been campaigning on out there, like a, a COVID Royal Commission, uh, the Salmon Farm, Dargaville Aerodrome, funding residential care for the aged, that seems like an expensive one, uh, to be frank, but are these the things that will be your top priorities? Well, look, you can't have 63,000 people out there in the aged care industry working hard up against it, 25 years in the job and on a minimum wage. This is a tragedy. We've got to look at our priorities first. We're the ones, the National Party just stole it the other day, they're talking about having a mini-budget. We announced that a month ago, the need for a mini-budget before Christmas. And they got announced yesterday as though it's theirs. It's not theirs, it's imitation. But my real point is, mm -hmm. we're going to have to do things and get things, the basics right first. Because I've just come back from the Hawke's Bay. There's about two, 150, 200 million alone on the Cyclone Gabriel catastrophe there that's not being attended to. Money runs out on 1 October. Yes, well, there are plenty of places, not just the mini-budget, where your parties mm. do coalesce, uh, National and New Zealand First I'm talking about here. But what do you think of this reintroduction of foreign buyers into the housing market? Well, look, I can't find an economist that can make their figures work. And every economist, and I agree as well, I said so at the time, there's about 500 million per year short or 2.1 billion over four years. Mm. You know, I did run the economy once as a former <laughs> treasurer. I've got some idea how to run things. But my point was, and no economist can find out how it works either. And I noticed yesterday, National has dropped it out from its calculations. So what happens then? Because they are relying on this money to deliver tax cuts, their central campaign promise. And you say the numbers don't add up. Many economists have, are questioning them. So what happens when you get into the negotiating room on but, this foreign Yeah, but this tax? is the most unreal election. We've got people making promises day after day of what they're going to do. And they haven't got the money for it. So you're saying that's a false promise? Well, it's got to be a false promise because I, it is so critical. We are, we're at 0.9% growth. That's under 1%. With the next year, IMF predicts us to be 159 in the world of 150, uh, 160 countries that they uh, looked at. Yes. Now, that means these promises, throwing money around like an eight-armed octopus, are irresponsible and extreme, and they'll need experience, and they'll need common sense to stop it. So is Christopher Luxon the eight-armed octopus? Well, I'm not going to point my finger at anybody, but I'm What seeing... about a tentacle? Will you point a tentacle? <laughs> well, I'm seeing these people making comments, and I've talked to serious economists, really serious economists, and they say, Winston, I don't know what on earth they think's happening because we ain't got the money. So it's unaffordable. Will you uh, draw the line, or draw a line well, under, or draw a line through I'm foreign buyers tax? But I'm not negotiating with anybody here. Well, I'm said to Mr Luxon, and Nicola Willis says, come on, show me the spreadsheet that this stacks up. <laughs> I'm, I'm open-minded. I'll look at it. I'll reserve my decision until I've seen how it stacks up. But please show us now. Well, this week has also been dominated by the idea that this coalition between National Act and New Zealand First will be chaos. Why can't anybody hose that down? No, because you guys started it. <laughs> well, I think yeah, you guys you started guys, it. Yeah, no, you guys started it. You, you carry we on as though. Look, the All Blacks are playing right now. They're, 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 they're the combination of all these provinces going head to head and scrapping every darn month. And so all you're sudden, the All Blacks. And all of a sudden together. But this is an All Blacks team now when it comes to, to be a government. And don't people understand that? Well, so New, Ze uh, New Zealand First National Act are the All 
All Blacks. That's how you're describing it this well, morning. Well, no, I'm talking about the principle of it. Now we've got a serious crisis and we've got to put our differences and egos aside and start acting like adults. Well, do you it think... It demands that. Do you think that David Seymour can put his grievances aside? Well, what, did, got, what did you do to well, him? I because can, this look, is personal. It's visceral. <laughs> what did you do, Helen Helen Stark instead? and Jim Bolger, two different political parties' leaders, will tell you I can. Can that's he? My, that's my bona fides. Can he? That's my good faith. That's Latin for good faith, of course. No, uh, you ask him. Don't ask me. Well, you once threatened, threatened to knock him out in a boxing ring on Facebook. <laughs> I did not. You did? No, he, he accused me of being, you know, on a, sort of on a Zimmer frame, and I said, look, you and I have been a scrap at the last 10 seconds. You hit me, I hit you, and the ambulance were hitting 60. No. Or 100. I think it was 100. Case. I don't want to fact well, check you. Well, it's case, see. 100 <laughs> 60 miles an hour. But you, may, you, you threatened to knock this person out. You've had a no, long... No, I just said, that, I just said well, this is what this would happen if you want to behave like that. This would what happen if you want a physical contest. I think that's now, what they call a, a threat. Statement. It's oh, not I think a, it's, it's a not threat. A threat. It's not a threat. Look, uh, <laughs> I was going to say something then, but you'd call that a... Oh, you're going to threat him again, No, no, you? you would say, oh, you awful men are saying that, so I'm not going to say it. I'm curious about what it is now. Well, I don't want to be brought to the SBCA. <laughs> <laughs> the mind boggles. Now, don't say that's against Seymour. It just comes as a surprise to me. It's a bit of a really funny. The mind boggles. In any case, David Seymour says there can only be one uh, party around the Cabinet table with National. Who are they going to be? Can I just tell you that you've invited all the other leaders, and I'm here now for 12 minutes, and they're rapidly going by, and you're spending all your time with two other political party leaders, which is not what's fair. Well, Surely New Zealand First is entitled to put why it's on this mission, why it's going to be uh, making sure that co-governance stops, why they think National okay. NAC, why they believe National NAC can't be trusted, because they're both for co-governance in their DNA, and I see the National Party candidates now arguing for it. The one in Christchurch Central, the one in Waikato. We've got a serious crisis coming here because it is corroding our democracy and we have to save this country's democracy well, right here, right now. Well, I'm glad you brought it up because um, you have already given Christopher Luxon quite a workout this week. Um, there are accusations by the Prime Minister during the leaders' debate that you're race-baiting around this issue of co-governance. So we have that moment. Let's take a look. Paddy, Paddy, I've got a quote I want to give you. This is a quote from last week, and it's from a New Zealand First candidate speaking at a Meet the Candidates meeting. And I, I'm a, I, I get a bit angry about this because this is a direct quote, and he's talking about Māori. He said, cry if you want to, we don't care. You pushed it too far. We are the party with the cultural mandate and the courage to cut out your disease and bury you permanently. Christopher, you're willing to work with these people. Why? Well, I'll tell you why, because look, I'll tell you what's going to happen is I don't want to work with the, well, I don't want to work with New Zealand first, but I am going to make the call if it means that I stop you to party Do you think that's racist? coming to power in three years. Do you think that's racist? I do. I don't think that's acceptable so at all. So why are you willing I to don't think that's sitting around the cabinet at table? At I don't think that's acceptable at all. But so I think both of them agreed there that those comments they say are racist. Well, sadly, Mr Luxon should have held his opinion until he knew what it was about. He didn't wait for context, he didn't wait for fact, and he was being lied to. Ballantyne, three weeks ago, was not talking about Māori. He was talking about the disease, the virus of co-government and how it corrodes our democracy. It's in his statement. I checked it out. Hold on. And I have defended that for the last three years uh, in my campaign I to stop get that. this happening. But he says, we are the party with the cultural mandate and the courage to cut out your disease and bury you permanently. Yeah, well, the co-governance is the disease. No, that's not an esoteric... He's not talking about an esoteric concept of co-governance. He's talking this, about Excuse me, Māori. I'm telling you... And he said that it was about elite Māori... I'm telling, yes, you, I'm uh, telling you, as the leader of New Zealand First and the person who's talked to Ballantyne, who's Ballantyne, is repeating my comments all around New Zealand that's back in the walls, that it is a disease, it is a virus, and we're going to do just that. But what is a disease and no, a virus? Mr. Is it, is it Can I just say, or no, is let's it go back to Mr Luxon's inexperience and falling for it. He got sucked in with a lie. No, well, let's go back to the statement, because I, you're not talking about burying co-governance there. You're talking about oh, no, no, burying no, no. elite yeah. Māori. No, we're not talking about elite, burying elite Māori. I'm a, I'm Māori and proud of my Māori background. We've got more Māori in our party, but we believe we are New Zealanders first. We're not here on an ethnic uh, mission. We're on a mission for all New Zealanders. But this is... That's the difference. This is coded racial language. No, it's, it's designed not. to whip up anger no, and I'm get I'm sorry, votes. I'm sorry. Everybody can see that. I'm sorry, with the greatest respect, I'm not putting up with ignorant commentators like you <laughs> saying, that I, uh, saying that I, for example, have spent my whole career working for Māori and other great Mr. causes. Mr Peters, now, attacking me does not, is just uh, a deflection. But I'm not going to be over It's not addressing the point that this is coded racial be, language and I'm everybody not, can see it. See, I'm not going to be able to talk like that. If you want to talk to me seriously, then how about we have some respect and give me my chance to answer. I've got a book here I brought along for you because I know you haven't read it. 
It's the most brilliant Maori up on Nangata story about the Treaty of Waitangi. I believe him. I don't believe these elite Maori that you're trying to defend, yes. who are self-appointed and who never talk about the most important persons. The poor Maori at the bottom is getting nothing from them. Causes. I want to talk I want to you to about the, I want to talk to you about the treaty in just a second, but I also want to uh, bring up something that's happened this week. Uh, the Māori Party says last night uh, that this polarising and divisive campaign that's being run uh, along these lines of race uh, has resulted in uh, Hana Rafati Maipi uh, Clark. Uh, being, there's, she was she had a home invasion this week. This I mean, is, this is unacceptable, this is simply, isn't this is, it? This is simply lazy journalism. Uh, actually, can I finish? It's the Māori Party. Can I finish? You've given, you, they blame you, you. You've asked the question. Now interrupt me before I've got a chance to answer. Stop your lazy please, journalism. Please, please. Stop your lazy journalism. This is a lie. The Māori Party is based on race. It's based on the Māori race, and, and I've said from the word go, I'll never work with that party because it's based on race. And look at their... their, their, their Platform. They say that we have got special DNA superior to you. I'm talking. Don't you understand how racial they are? I'm talking to you about what they are? the I real do. world consequences of this polarisation and That's division. That's not a real consequence. You just made it up. That that is that must be unacceptable you to you. It. A politician's home invasion. You, look, sorry, you just frivolously made that up. That somehow. Us calling them out for being a bunch of racists and superior people who say that we got better DNA than European. And that's what he said, didn't he? And all of a sudden, I'm responsible for that. Give me a break. Well, I can tell this is going to um, be, you know, this is, well, it's, you'll be it's bubbling when this is over, over, isn't it? You'll this be is all bubbling this, over. No, you'll be better informed when this is over and so will the media, but you're not going to win this campaign. I'm curious about your are. comments, Mr Peters, about that Māori are not Indigenous. Is that because you don't believe in the treaty? No, because a genius, anthropological genius and also a brilliant member of parliament called Peter Buck went all the way to Hawaii as well as part of his, 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 mom, his political career. He said so. Peter Buck is a genius. Do, uh, Ngata, you, uh, Ngata, do you believe in the treaty? Ngata, Pomara and Buck agree with him. And so did Carol, the first uh, Maori who came a long way to become Deputy Prime Minister in politics. I'm talking about five geniuses who, believe, who, I, who agree with me, and I agree with them because they're geniuses. So, and I'm not taking it from people who say to me, you can be indigenous in two countries. Look, I Mr. Went to court, Peters, no, do you I believe in the treaty? Because it seems to me that by undermining, um, you know, whether or not no, Māori are indigenous, away. that undermines the validity well, of the treaty. Now, Is that the point? What a shallow conclusion. It, I'm asking you. What you a shallow conclusion. Of course, I believe in the Treaty of Waitangi. Three clauses, and I don't want them manufactured to be what others are saying it is against the advice of Ngata, Pomare, Buck, Carol and all those people I got great confidence in. OK, so do you uh, want a referendum on the principles like uh, David Seymour does? Well, how can you have a referendum on the principles in 2026 and deal with this problem now? That just shows that Mr Seymour is about imitation. Hobson's pledge went to, them, Hobson's pledge went to him on this matter in 2017. And you know what he said to them? But there's no votes in that. And now when he sees New Zealand first trying to alert the country to this, he's jumped on board. But it's pure imitation. And his team, as you know, have got the establishment of uh, co-governance, mm. like the Auckland Super City and everything else, written at large all over it. Mr Peters, I have one uh, final question for you. Um, because I've been watching your campaign and it's about let's, ta let's take back our country. But I'm wondering, you know, how we move our country forward. Because that is the point of politics, isn't it? Is to navigating change. And I just wonder, just finally, you know, how at 78 you are the future of this country. What an ageist, arrogant statement. It's a, something that voters you know, want to man, know, Mr Peters. It's man legitimate. I, there's a man I got to know and spent some time. His name's Mahatia. He became the Prime Minister for the second time. He's 93 years of age in Malaysia. He's 98 years of age now, and he still advises the Maya, Malaysian government. What an arrogant, elitist statement. Are Let me you tell the, you something. How are you the future? Let me tell you something. Some people look after their health, and some people keep themselves alert. And a whole lot more alert than some young, arrogant people who would say a thing like that. If New Zealand today saw the older people over 65 stop their volunteer work, our society would utterly collapse. And I wish you'd be far more grateful about that than to make that bitter, acerbic statement. Mr. Pitt. Very, very sad that you descended to that. I'm grateful to but have you here this morning. I'm grateful to have you here this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.